Next speaker is the uh, Workers' Delegate from Sri Lanka, Mr. Karupia. Please, floor is yours. Madam Chairperson, the first instance it is my duty to thank you and the organizer for giving me an opportunity to address this August Assembly. I came here as the worker delegate representing the National Trade Union Federation and the Lanka Jataka State Workers Union. For nearly 43 years, I toiled for the upliftment of the quality of the working population, whom I represent as any other trade unionist does. Employees in the trade union, tea and rubber plantations in Sri Lanka are mainly Tamils of South Indian origin, whose forefathers came from India almost two centuries ago. The British administrators brought them here to deploy them, work in the coffee plantations and later in the tea plantation. They were the live wire of Sri Lankan economy. The hard work but the thankless efforts of the, these people developed the plantations and made Ceylon tea the most sought after beverage in the world. They continue to work even today with the same pace and, uh, passion. The British developed the plantation as well as other sectors of the economy, but the quality of life of the plantation workers remain in sorry state. Though we also have witnessed much improvement in their environment since the colonial era, we believe there is much to improve their infrastructure facilities. Most importantly, although they toil for the upliftment of the economy during the passage of nearly two centuries, they do not own an inch of land despite being provided housing. They cry for land ownership and decent housing and echoed for several decades and was a distant dream of this community. At last, the present government under the President Maitripala Zirisena identified this need as a priority within a short period. It was possible to identify and confer own purchase of land ownership of housing to plantation families numbering over 245,000. Besides the British administration, is their occupation after one and a half centuries, but live in the plantation community who are of Indian origin like refugees with nowhere to go. I think there is a moral responsibility on the part of the British government to assist in construction of houses as now land has been allocated. However, I thank Sri Lankan President His Excellency Maitripala Sirisena and Prime Minister Honorable Ranil Vikram Singh for the bold steps taken to implement the distance dream of plantation workers, several thousands of plantation families. I also take this opportunity to thank the Director General, Mr. Guy Ryder, for in initiating the fair migra migration agenda to eradicate the modern labor slavery in the world of work. Migrant workers face many challenges at the country of origin and destination. As a result of problems associated with the employment contract, the problems faced by the migrant workers are manifold. The stakeholders have developed a model contract which could form, a, form the basis for standard contract comfortable at both ends. The contract is based on the ILO recommendation number 86, article 22, and also ILO convention 189 for domestic workers who form the majority of women migrant workers from Sri Lanka to Arab states. We appeal the government of Arab countries to give priority honor and enforce this basic model standard contract at both ends to ensure decent work norms and working, uh, worker rights to migrant workers. On the question of minimum wage, due to agitation by trade unions, the government had agreed to, in principle, to fix a national minimum wage for the private sector workers. I understand that certain employees are against the government inter intervene in the fixing national minimum wage. In, view, in our view, this is a serious misconception. The governments have the prior, uh, primary duty to play a national important role in this regard. Informal economy workers play an important role in the economy of Sri Lanka, but the trade union ordinance denies their worker rights and freedom of association. I must thank the ILO for taking initiative to formalize informal workers by recognizing them as workers. In keeping with the ILO decent work program, our trade union federation embarked on variety of programs, in particular in association with the social partners, educational activities have been enhanced. There is a continuous dialogue with that enhanced better understanding between social partners, thus reducing the
tensions and conflicts of the work, workplace through the National Labor Advisory Council. The tripartite consultation machinery which formulated in terms of ILO Convention number 144. My speech will not be completed without placing on record the contribution of the ILO country office in Sri Lanka. Lang uh, and Mr. Donglin Lee, the country director whose technical and financial support we have enjoyed over the past year. As before, their cooperation has not just been confined to, uh, to my trade union, but to all trade unions, including other working on the plantations and outside such as those representing workers in free trade zones. In conclusion, I thank the chair lady and all of you for the patient hearing my view are genuine and hope that my message will be understood. Thank you. Before giving the floor to the Minister